When it comes to a remaster of my favorite game, all I care about is just how much the original source material is respected. That's all I could ever ask for. After so many years of playing the same game, I never really knew what I was looking for in a remake. I just knew it was time for this game to get the attention that it deserves. Whether I like to admit it or not, the game I grew up with is now a really old game. And even though it's aged very well for the era it was made, I've always wondered how Dead Rising would look if it was made today. The Deluxe Remaster has answered that exact question, but somehow it's even managed to exceed anything I could have ever imagined. As a hardcore fan of the original game, I have been absolutely blown away by what I've played so far. I have logged hours just being mesmerized by how light reflects off a sign. I am basically a cat with a shiny object. In this video, I don't exactly aim to review the game. I just want to take the opportunity to show you things a little bit closer. After all, that is more my style. The game comes out very soon, but we have the ability to see it right now. So let me show you some of the things that has kept me occupied for the last two weeks. And as a fan of the original game, has really just made me happy. First and foremost, something that I have been eager to spotlight and something that I never stop thinking about is just how good this remaster looks. Keep in mind, everything I captured was recorded using an older build of the game. But there were several occasions where I found myself completely distracted. I let go of the controls and I just sat there for a moment. Whether it was watching the sunset or seeing how light passes through the trees, or maybe the way light fills a corridor. I caught myself just staring at this game several times. And maybe that's just me. To be fair, I'm still impressed by some of the details in the original game. But in the remaster, when the conditions are just right and the lighting is hitting just perfectly, it's breathtaking. But something that I think even rivals my amazement at the new visuals is just how faithful this game is to its source material. For instance, every single zombie model is just an improvement over the original data. The aesthetic of the zombies has remained exactly the same as we remember them, and all they've done is beautifully recreate the models with modern graphics. Every single zombie is now so incredibly detailed, and all the new splatters of blood and gore is genuinely unsettling. They've managed to accomplish this while making sure that the zombies still look the same way as they did in 2006. They still wear the same clothes and they still have the same faces. They've just improved on every single detail. They went the extra mile with zombies and not just in the way they've recreated them, They've even gone out of their way to take zombies that were originally only meant to be seen in cutscenes, and they've now included them into the mix of in-game zombies. That trucker zombie in the intro is now just a casual sight to see walking around inside the Willamette Mall, which is a bit surreal. Nothing in the remaster is out of place, and nothing is where it doesn't belong. The mall still uses familiar textures that we can easily spot from the original game. They've just been completely overhauled. Everything just feels like they took the original 2006 game and just spat it out at triple the resolution and detail. Areas of the mall that were once simple with graphics that were stuck in the mid-2000s now look as good as the way we remember them when we first saw them. It wasn't until this deluxe remaster that I even noticed how old Dead Rising looks. The artists at Capcom knew exactly what needed to be done without overdoing it. Even if it's just something as simple as adding trash onto the floor, or making surfaces reflective, or just adding a new layer of paint onto everything, every single area of the mall has been improved. Nothing has gone untouched. And it's almost a bit trippy to walk through an area that you remember being fairly barren 
and now seeing it completely filled to the brim with new scenery and a shocking attention to detail. But I think what's even more honorable than the purity of this remaster is the attention to detail to things that almost don't even matter. I've mentioned this in my previous video, but Capcom is pulling out everything from their archives. They are trying to recapture the original developer's vision with this game by resurrecting features and details that were removed before the original game was even finished. So while this remaster is completely faithful to the game that actually sold in stores, they are taking it a step further and paying close attention to features and details that we were never actually given. Some of which are a bit more commonly known, like bringing back the ability for the police zombies to fire their guns. But some of these beta recreations are so incredibly niche that only I would ever notice. To give you an example of just the level of detail and attention we're dealing with, let me ask you a question. Do you know about the wind cone on the rooftop? Probably not, right? Well, that's because it was a pointless detail, a small model of a wind cone that could be seen on the rooftop during the development of the game. A detail that, for whatever reason, was removed at some point in 2005 and never saw the light of day in the final game. It sounds pointless, and that's because it is. But someone on the remaster team must have looked back at development footage and thought, hmm, I can bring that back. And so they did. That is just an example of how much the developers of DRDR care for not only the source material, but the history of the game itself. The developers have also played around with ideas that I genuinely believe have spawned from the community itself. The Mr. Willoughby costume is a clear sign of that. We have been memeing this bumblebee for years and joking about how funny it would be to be able to play as him. And now, all of a sudden, it has become a costume. Coincidence? I think not! This game has so many new features that we've been needing, and while I was originally hesitant on any sort of gameplay changes, the inclusion of autosaves is by far the most remarkable improvement. It doesn't get in the way, and you don't even have to use it. It's just there. The time-skipping mechanic is also a blessing that I never even thought I would have needed. The game no longer requires the player to sit around twiddling their thumbs if they don't want to. Moving while aiming is like something from another universe. For fans of the first game who have just become used to standing still, the ability to roam around the mall with your weapon drawn is just so unfamiliar. It sounds like such a simple improvement, and believe me, it is, but to us, it's a game changer. The preview build was quite short. It was really only consisting of the first day and was just meant to be a glimpse into what's to come. My experience playing it was absolutely fantastic. The preview has now left us with footage of the game and a lot more development details that we can hold on to until the game is finished. Capcom PR and the marketing team have been absolutely awesome. And so long as the guidelines were followed, practically anything from this preview can be shown. I have tossed footage onto my second channel and even onto Twitter just to show what I was hyper fixated on. Maybe everyone is not as positive or sees it the way I'm seeing it, but this remaster is a gift to the fans. And a large part of it only exists because of the fans. We've been waiting for a long time for a remaster, and the patience has finally paid off. Capcom has paid extremely close attention to us behind the scenes and has listened to what we wanted. I can't wait for everyone to get their hands on this game, but until then, thanks for watching.